In PC View, an alarm variable is a variation of a bit variable. Imagine a general alarm for the building. First create a bit variable. For example, general alarm. With the domain general. This domain will be used to filter the alarm in the alarm viewer, for example. To configure the bit as an alarm, just tick the alarm property. And to be able to simulate the value, set the command property. Once configured as an alarm, the behavior of the variable is modified so that the real-time value visible to the user has five possible states instead of three for a bit, depending not only on the value of the underlying bit variable, but also on the action of the user. The best way to understand the various alarm status is to examine the alarm lifecycle. First, the bit value is equal to zero, the alarm is off and acknowledged, there's no alarm. The alarm is on and has not been acknowledged by a user. A user acknowledges the alarm, which becomes on acknowledged. The alarm becomes off when a bit value goes to zero. If the alarm is on and not acknowledged, and the bit value goes to zero, the alarm becomes off not acknowledged, and then off whenever the user acknowledges it. Now let's discuss the Advanced Tab properties. The Advanced Tab of the dialog shows different properties for the alarm such as the activation property that defines if the alarm is activated, on or not acknowledged, when the value of its underlining bit changes from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. Priorities and levels are used in hierarchies and or filters the PC View features such as the user rights, alarm viewer, and so on. It is also possible to define a delay in seconds between the alarm source becoming active and the alarm displayed in PC View. Additionally, it is possible to define associated behaviors to an alarm. This part is covered in the Alarms Advanced Tutorial. Now we will define the threshold bit variable for the time as an alarm. Since it is a threshold variable, the value will be set to 1 and the alarm is triggered whenever the time value is greater or equal to that of the threshold value. For example, the threshold value is 2. And the alarms are created. First, we'll create a new text to simulate the alarm. Since an alarm variable is a variation of a bit variable, if its command property is set, you can control its value using a send bit animation. Select the alarm, general alarm. Now let's create an object to display the status of the alarm. Depending on the status of the alarm, you are able to change the color of an object, Display a specific text. Animations are disabled here as we don't use a text object. Display a symbol. And hide or show an object. Here we're going to use the color animation. The alarm animation displays the different states of a particular alarm. So select the alarm. You can choose a color for different states of the alarm, but by default the dynamic mode is selected. This means that the animation would use the project preference colors for alarms. Here we choose to define locally the colors for this particular animation using the static mode. Double click on the color and select the color from the advanced color panel. Our button is now ready to go. Let's try it out in run mode. The object is animated and the alarm is on, not acknowledged. The Alarm Viewer is a tool used to display a list of alarms and to allow the user to interact with the alarms by either acknowledging or masking them. You can insert an Alarm Viewer from the Insert menu, and it's possible to insert different Alarm Viewers in the same screen and in the same project.
the Alarm Viewer properties appear, but before we go through it, we're going to see how the Alarm Viewer works in runtime. You can resize and move the Alarm Viewer anywhere in your Mimic as with any other object within PC View. Now we'll switch to runtime. And when you simulate an alarm, you can see the status of the alarm in the viewer. The menu allows to filter the list to be displayed with different status. For example, here I filter the alarm unavailable. You can also acknowledge or mask and unmask the alarms. To acknowledge an alarm, just select it from the list and click on the button from the menu. And that's it. The alarm has been acknowledged. Also, if you right-click on the menu, you can change the location of the menu and even its content. Two display modes exist. As you can see here, when the value changes, the same line is refreshed. This is the default mode called List Mode. If you switch to the Online mode, as shown, Then a line appears for each state of the alarm. The alarm viewer is fully configurable. In design mode, double click the alarm viewer to access the properties. Four tabs appear. The display tab is used to configure general display settings. The alarm viewer can display a maximum of eight columns with a fully customizable content. You can configure the column title and display the format in the corresponding column using substitution characters. Click the Help button to access the online help within PC View. And here at the topic we would look up configuring the Alarm Viewer line format. It shows all the format possibilities. And for example, we can add a substitution to display the domain. And here we enter the title for the new column, Domain. And enter the substitution, Pound D, to display the domain. From the Execution tab, you can select the number of lines you want to manage. You can select the mode list or online as default. You can also select the allowances or authorization that the operators are permitted at runtime. Here we'll authorize the operator to print the selected alarm by clicking the print icon in the toolbar. The filter tab allows you to filter the alarm you want displayed. For example, Alarm with Domain General. You can also filter the alarm priorities. Switch to Run Mode, and now we can see the domain of alarms. And it's even possible to change the filter with the Advanced Properties dialog. So here we want to display alarms with the domain light. Thank you for joining PCView Basic Alarm Tutorials. Thank you.